Okay. This module 3 is all about cost volume profit analysis. Actually, the cost volume profit analysis is one of the pivotal topics in the board examination. This covers the computation of the break-even point, computation of the margin of safety, computation of the the uh, carrying uh, contribution margin ratio, contribution margin per unit, etc. Okay. This CBP analysis is your cost volume profit analysis. This is a tool used by management in order to determine on what is the level wherein they would recover the amount invested. Meaning at breaking even point, there is no such thing as profit as profit or loss. And any volume produced beyond the break even point that would give a profit for them, meaning that would be a barometer on how the company will perform and to assess what is the level of production or sales that the that the entity should have in order to have a sufficient level for them to assess if they will be generating profit in the succeeding sales. And these are the items that will affect your cost volume profit analysis. You have the setting price, you have the variable cost per unit, you have the volume, fixed cost, and the sales mix. Again, just like in module number one, we have discussed the so-called relevant relevant uh, assumptions pertaining to module number one, and that is the, the assumptions wherein it would be true in a certain range that the fixed cost will be fixed in total and varies in units, and the variable cost varies in total but fixed in unit. There is the so-called relevant range assumptions well, in module number three, we have the so-called CBP assumptions. And the CBP assumption says these are the limitations under this is only valid within a relevant range, time and linearity assumptions. The selling price does not change as sales volume changes. There is no change in the inventory levels during the period. In case of multi-product company, the sales mix of the unit sold will not be changed. The labor productivity, production technology, and marketing conditions remain constant and stable. And this is what you call the CBP assumptions or the underlying cost volume profit assumptions. Okay, so these are the related terminologies as we discuss the cost volume profit analysis. We have the contribution margin. The contribution margin class is the difference between your sales and your variable cost. So sales minus the variable cost is what you call the contribution margin. That is the difference between sales and variable cost. It is also known as marginal income profit distribution, contribution to fixed costs, or incremental contribution. Marginal income, since that is the excess income that would be used to cover the fixed costs. This is profit distribution or the contribution to fixed costs or the incremental contribution. Well, the CM ratio is the percentage of CM to corresponding sales. So that is CM, contribution margin, divided by sales that would give you the CM ratio. Or it can be computed by using the unit CM or the CM per unit divided by the unit selling price. This CM here is the total, total CM, and this is your total sales. While here, this is your per unit. CM per unit divided by the selling price per unit. Okay? The CM ratio is also equal to your change in CM time divided by the change in sales. Okay? So the, the, the symbol triangle here denotes the change sign or the difference. Given the underlying CBP assumptions, CM ratio is constant regardless of the number of units sold or produced. 
Okay, the CM would always be constant regardless on the number of units sold or produced. Okay, and this is now your break-even point analysis. This is the level of activity in units or in pesos. When we say break-even point, it may be in units or it may be in pesos, at which the total revenues is equal to cost, meaning there is no profit nor loss because the total revenues equates to the total cost. Therefore, there is neither a profit or loss. And the formula to compute for the break-even per unit, you have the fixed cost divided by the contribution margin per unit. While the break-even point in pesos, that is your fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio. Or it can be computed by multiplying the break-even point per unit times the level of sales. Mas magandang i-discuss yan when we have the problems later on. And this bullet number 3 and 3, I will reserve that because this can be better discussed using the problem. So let's start with problem number 1 here. In problem number 1, we are asked to determine the following. The selling price per unit, the variable cost per unit, the CM ratio per unit, and what are the monthly break-even points in units and in pesos, and without it sorting the computation, what is the total contribution margin at break-even point? Again, without resorting to computation, what is the total contribution margin at break-even point? So let's copy this figure or problem in Excel. Okay, so these are the related information given. You have the sales, variable cost, CM, fixed cost, and profit. And to determine now, what is the selling price per unit? So this is 600,000 divided by 15,000 units. So this is the selling price per unit. This is 600,000 divided by 15,000. So this is 40, while your variable cost per unit is 420,000 divided by 15,000 units sold. Okay, then you have the contribution margin per unit here. However, the problem asks you to determine the contribution margin ratio. No? Uh, this is the CM per unit, not, not actually CM ratio per unit. That should only be contribution margin per unit. So the CM per unit or the contribution margin per unit, that is your selling price minus the related variable cost per unit. So the CM per unit here is 12 pesos. And to determine what is the break-even point you, in units and in pesos, you have the formula given in the lecture a while ago that your break-even point in units, that should be your fixed cost, divided by the CM per unit. While the break-even point in pesos that should be your fixed cost divided by the CM ratio. Fixed cost divided by the CM ratio or percentage. So to compute now for the break-even point per unit, your fixed cost here is 150,000 150, divided by the CM per unit divided by 12. 
So this is the answer. 12,500 units that should be the break-even point in units. Meaning at this level, there will be no gain or no profit, no loss. Let's prove it. No? So at 12,500, this is the selling price per unit, the variable cost per unit, and the CM per unit. If we will use these constant figures here and try to simulate what is the profit to be generated at 12,500 units, which is at break-even point, we will prove that the profit should be zero because under the break-even point per unit, the total revenue is equal to the total cost. So 12,500, so this is your 12,500 units times the selling price per unit of 40. And this is 500,000. Well, the variable cost, that should be 12,500 units times the variable cost per unit, and this will give you 350,000. So this is now your contribution margin. Contribution margin is the difference between your selling price and the variable cost, which gives you 150,000. At this contribution margin level, your fixed cost here is 150,000 also. Okay, meaning at 12,500, which is the break-even point, your profit should be zero. At break-even point, there is no profit nor loss. And any volume that is being sold after the break-even point, that will give you profit. Any level of sales that is below the break-even point will provide you a net loss. Okay, so the answer here, the monthly break-even point in units, that is 12,500. So what is now the break-even point in pesos? This is actually the break-even point in pesos. That is the break-even point in units times the selling price. However, the formula provides you that to get the break-even point in pesos, you must use the fixed cost divided by the contribution margin percentage or ratio, okay? The contribution margin ratio is to be computed using your CM, contribution margin, divided by your sales. So this is 180,000 divided by 600,000 to give you the CM percentage. So that is 180,000 divided by 600,000. And that is 30%. That is your CM ratio. CM ratio or the CM percentage. Okay. This can also be computed by using the per unit. So this is 12 CM per unit divided by the selling price per unit of 40. That will also give you 30%. And to get the break-even point in pesos, that is your fixed cost divided by the contribution margin percentage or ratio. So your fixed cost here is 150,000 divided by 30% CM ratio that will give you 500,000. So there is so many ways to compute for this break-even point in pesos. But as a matter of advice, once you have computed the break-even point in units, just multiply that to the selling price per unit to get the break-even point in pesos. So here, if you got already the 12,500 here times the selling price per unit, that will give you the break-even point in pesos. So the answers are in item one. So these are the related answers for item one the selling price per unit, the variable cost per unit, and the CM per unit. While item two, what are the break-even points in units and sales? That should be 12,500 units. That is the break-even point in units. 
and the break even sales here is 500,000 pesos. So the last problem here, without resorting to computation, what is the total contribution margin at break even point? Since the concept states that there is no profit or loss, there is no profit or loss, no? there is no profit or loss at break even point, meaning the level of contribution margin at break even point should equal to the amount of fixed cost. Since the fixed cost given here is 150,000, since the break even sales prov provides you no profit or no loss, zero. So at break even point, your CM is equal to your fixed cost. So without resorting to computations, if you're asked, what is the total contribution margin at break even point that should always be equal to your fixed cost? As your cost contribution margin, is the amount that will absorb the corresponding fixed cost. Okay, so that is your problem one. Let's proceed to the next item in module four. In, in here, problem number two, sabi niya, if one more unit is sold, the net income will be what? And refer to Hunter information about what is the contribution margin ratio. Okay? So, madali itong una. Itong pangalawa kasi, what is the contribution margin ratio? The contribution margin ratio, that is your selling price minus the variable cost that will give you the CM per unit divided by the sales price per unit that will give you the contribution margin ratio. So if you will provide a straight line computation for this, that should be 85 minus 25, and that is 60 divided by 85. Okay, so that is now your contribution margin ratio. So copy natin sa Excel. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is your problem number two. See, yeah, class, can you please try solving the requirement? And let's see, no? Let's see if what is your answer. Just provide A, B, C, or D. I will just give you 30 seconds to solve for problem two. Okay, ito lang class. If one more unit is sold, net income will be. Okay, so the unit produced and sold here is 1,250. The problem states that if one more unit is sold, so this will become 1,251. So net income will change at what level? Okay, so please compute for the requirement in problem number two in the next 30 seconds. Your time starts now.
Okay, let's discuss. So here, <clears throat> at present level, at 1,250 units sold and produced, you have your sales here, variable cost, CM, fixed cost, and this is your profit. At 1,250 with a selling price of 85. So this is 106,250. And the variable cost related to that is 1,250 times 25. So this is 31,250. So this is 106 minus 31,250 will give you 75,000 CM. And the level of fixed cost here is 10,000. So this is 75,000 minus 10,000 here. That will give you 65,000 profit. Well, if another unit will be sold, this will now be 1,251. At 1,251, so this is 1,251 times 85. And this is 1251 times 25 per unit. So this will give you 10635 minus 31275. So this is 7060 minus the fixed cost of 10,000. So this is 75,060 minus 10,000. That will give you 65,000. 060. Therefore, there would be an increase in profit amounting to what? 60 pesos. So this is the answer. The answer is letter C. Okay. However, class, you should not resort to a computation like this. Using the concept, you can identify what is the corresponding answer by using the concept behind the cost volume profit analysis but my first question is this at break even point what is the level of contribution margin in pesos at break even at break even point what is the level of contribution margin in pesos chat box please again at break even point there is no profit nor loss. So the profit here is zero. So at break-even point, what is the level of contribution margin? Chat box, please. Parang ganito. Yung kanina, di ba? Sabi kanina dun sa problem natin, without resorting to computation, without resorting to computation, determine the contribution margin. Ganon din yung tinatanong ko ngayon. Okay. So here, at break-even point, since the profit is zero, work baka zero, 10,000 si fixed cost, so the contribution margin should also be 10,000 pesos. So at CM class, the level of, at, at break-even point, the level of your CM is equal to your fixed cost. Nakuha. Meaning, if the problem will ask you, the change in the corresponding net income, the driver would be the CM per unit. Sige, let's prove. You have your sales here of 85. The variable cost is 25. So this is the selling price per unit and this is the variable cost per unit. If this is 85 and this is 25, the CM per unit will be 60. Okay. Okay, 60. Therefore, therefore, a one unit equivalent that should always be equal to your CM per unit. Meaning, if this is the level of sales now, and you will produce one unit more than 1,250, 
the change in income will always be related to the change in CM. So here, if there would be a movement no, of one unit from the 1,250, you will just multiply 60 times 1. So the change in net income now will be 60. So if the movement will be one unit from the previous, so the difference between these two is one unit times the CM per unit. So this is 60 times 1 unit so that is 60 so you 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 have to forego this computation because you can arrive at 60 pesos by just using the concept so there is a movement of one unit here what if what if the company will produce five units more than 1250 what would be the change in income so good and then so what should be your answer? If the movement is one unit, one unit times the CM per unit, the change in the income is 60. That is one times 60 per unit. What if there would be a increase of five? So that should be 1,255. What is now the change in that income? Chat box, please. Okay. So the change in that income should be 5 times the 60 per unit. So this is 5 units times 60. And the change will be 300. Let's prove Let's prove that this 300 pesos change in net income. At 1,255, this will be 1,255 times 85. Okay. Next, we have the variable cost here of 1,255 times 25. Okay, so the CM here is 106 minus 31,375 minus the fixed cost of 10,000 here. This will give you 75 minus 10,000. 75, 3 minus 10,000. That is 65,300. And the change now is 65,300 minus the previous 65,000. So the change in net income is 300. So again, you do not have to resort from this computation, but just use the concept as far as the change in net income is concerned. The change in net income then will be the CM per unit times the change in the volume of sales. Okay, so the answer here is letter C. So refer to the above information, what is the contribution margin ratio? So the contribution margin ratio, that is your CM over your sales or the CM per unit over the sales per unit. So this is 60 divided by 85. So this is now 70.59%. No? 70.59%. That is your CM ratio. Okay. So let's, let's now proceed. Okay. So here is item number three. Problem three. The requirement is for you to compute what is the change in net income, what is the contribution margin per unit, and what is the contribution margin ratio. So again, we solve this in the next 30 seconds. So there are three items to be solved. To be solved. One is the change in net income. The second one is the contribution margin per unit and the contribution margin ratio. Your time starts now, 30 seconds, thank you.
Okay, so let's solve. So here, class, what is the change in net income here? Chat bus, please. One more, one, one, if one more unit is sold. So that should be the CM per unit times one unit, diba? Ganun lang naman siya. So that should be what? You have the selling price per unit here, given naman yan. Eh. So this is 40. And this is variable cost per unit, which is 12. And the uh, CM per unit here is 40 minus 12. The, this is 28. And the fixed cost per unit is 2. And the uh, units produced and sold is 2,000. Again, to compute for the change in net income, you, you must not resort to end to computation such like this. No? Just multiply the CM per unit times the change in the number of units sold. Okay? So that should be what? So that is 28. No? So the answer should be increased by 28. And that is letter A for this item. Next, what is the contribution margin per unit? So that is 28. And what is the contribution margin ratio? So that should be 28 divided by 40. Okay, so this is 28 divided by 40 will, will give you 70% contribution margin ratio. Okay. So let's proceed to the next item. Okay. So in problem four, the requirement here, the new requirement here is to determine the unit sales required to earn a certain amount and item four, what is the sales in pesos required to earn 20% profit of 32,000 pesos per month? So, ito yung bullet three and four kanina. Ito yan. Yung nandito sa taas. Yan. Okay. If there would be a target profit the computation of the unit sales with target profit will be your fixed cost plus profit, the target profit divided by the CM per unit. Okay? So that would come up with the level of unit sales. If that is multiplied now by the selling price with the selling price will give you the peso sales with the target profit. Or this can be computed by peso sales with target return on sales, which is equal to your fixed cost divided by the CM minus the return on sales. So to better explain this concept, we will be using problem four. In problem four, there are four requirements, and that is one to compute for the net income at 15,000 units, then what is the break-even points in units and in pesos? What is the unit sales required to earn 40,000? And what is the sales in pesos required to earn an after-tax profit of 20% of 20% uh, tax profit of 32,000 for the month? Okay, so there is such a required profit in item number four. Okay. So let's copy this in Excel. So the new requirement here is item three and item four. Okay, the new requirement is item 3 and item 4. So, I will give you again 30 seconds to solve for requirement 1 and 2. 
from 30 to one minute. Solve for requirement one and two and post your answer in the chat box. Afterwards, we will proceed discussing item three and item four. Okay, your time starts now. There are three requirements. One, <clears throat> the net income at 15,000 units. While in two, you're asked to compute for the break-even point in units as well as in pesos. So, tatlo yun, tatlo. Let's compute, no? So, habang wala pa namang sagot, you can still post your answers in the chat box. Okay? So, here, the requirement is for us to compute the level of income at 15,000 units. So, let's plot the given info. The selling price per unit here is 24. The variable cost per unit is 32 or 24 where well, the selling price is 32 and the fixed cost here is 100,000 okay so the cm per unit here is 32 minus 24 okay so at 15,000 level of sales so this is 15,000. This is your sales class now. 32 times 15,000. So this is 480,000. This is 15,000 times 24. And this is the contribution margin minus 360. This is 120,000. And the level of fixed cost here is? 100,000. So this is your sales, variable cost, contribution margin, fixed cost, and your profit. So the profit here is 20,000. But in the exam, just use the CM times the number of items sold. Dito ka na magsimula at 120. Minus the fixed cost given, so the profit is 20,000 pesos. So this is the answer in item 1. In item 2, you are asked to compute the break-even point in units and the break-even point in pesos. So let's compute first for the break-even point in units. 
So the break-even point in units, you have your fixed cost amounting to 100,000 divided by the contribution margin per unit of eight. Okay, so this is your break-even point in units. 12,500, that is the answer in item two. And the break-even says in pesos, as a shortcut formula, just use this 12,500 units times the selling price of 32. And this is 400,000. So the answers for the three items here, the net income is 20,000. The break-even point in units is 12,500. Well, the break-even point in pesos, this is 400,000. And problem number three requires us to compute for the sales that would be required to earn 40,000 pesos. So that should be Your fixed cost of 100,000, we are getting the target unit sales here. The target unit sales can be computed by using the fixed cost here of 100,000 plus the required profit of 40,000. So this is 140,000 divided by 8 or the CM per unit. So this should be 140,000 divided by 8. And this is 7,500. So at 7,500 units, that will give you a 40,000 income. So if you want to prove that, this is your level of sales, 7,500 times what? Selling price of 32. You have the 17,500 times variable cost. So this is your CM. 140,000. And your fixed cost is 100,000 here. So the profit here will be 40,000. So this is the required profit. So to earn 40,000 profit, the company should sell 17,500 units. Okay, in problem number four, what is the sales in peso required to earn 20% 20, 20 after tax? Okay, so after tax, ibig sabihin, kailangan kasi before tax ito eh. So, kailangan mag before tax ka muna dito. Okay. So, the the formula should always, should be the same as the required profit. However, you, you will use the percentage here. So you have your fixed cost of 100,000 plus 32,000 divided by 80%, no? Divided by 80%. So this is 32,000 divided by 80% that will give you the profit, required profit before tax. Okay? <clears throat> So let's compute here. So okay. So this is the break even point with target profit. So this should be your fixed cost plus the profit divided by the CM per unit. The profit here should be before tax. So if we will use this formula, the fixed cost here is 100,000 plus your desired profit of 32,000. This should be before tax. This is already after tax. Eh? 
itong 32,000 na to. Okay, para maging before tax yan, divided by 80%. So, ganyan siya. Okay? Okay. Okay. Now, your fixed cost of 100,000 that's 32,000 divided by 80%. This is your numerator divided by the CM per unit. <clears throat> the CM per unit, that is 8. Okay. Can you please get what is the amount here in units? So that should be 32,000 divided by 80% plus 100,000 divided by 8. So that will be your break-even point with target profit of 32,000 after tax in units. Okay, let's compute. So this is 32,000 divided by 80%. So this is 40,000. 40,000 plus the fixed cost of 100,000. So your numerator is 140,000 divided by CM per unit of 8. And this will now give you the break-even point in units. And that is at 17,500. So at 17,500, you will earn an after-tax profit of 32,000. Okay, so, but this is just your units. The requirement is for you to compute what is the sales in pesos. So just multiply this in units, this 17,500 units to your selling price per unit of 32. So this is 17,500 times 32. That will give you 560,000. And that is the answer. So you have your sales here amounting to 560,000. You have the variable cost here amounting to 17,500 times the selling price per unit of, or the variable cost per unit of 24. So this is your contribution margin. 560 minus 420, and this is 140,000 pesos. This is your CM, okay? So minus the fixed cost of 100,000. And this will give you the profit. Okay, so this is 140,000 minus 100,000. The profit is 40,000 pesos. But this profit class, this is a profit before tax, okay? So minus the 20% tax, this is 40,000 times 20%. So that is 8,000. This is now the profit after tax. So this is 40 minus 8,000. Union class. At 32,000. Okay, so answers in problem 4. Item 1. So, 12,500 units. No? Ah, the, what will be the income at 15,000 units? The answer is 20,000. Next, what is the break-even point in units? That is 12,500. The break-even point in pesos, that is 400,000. And what is the unit sales required to earn 40,000? So that should be 17,500 units. Well, the sales in pesos required to earn 20% after tax profit of 32,000. The answer should be 560,000 pesos. Okay. So let's go to the next item. 
So in item number 5, we are asked to compute what is the break-even point in units and how many units need to be sold in order to earn a target profit of 150,000. Just like in the other problems, I will give you again 30 to 1 minute to solve problem 5 and post your answers in the chat box. Post mo class, huwag gumahiya, no? Kasi this is my basis of grading you in class participation. There's no way that I can grade you as far as class participation is concerned by just reviewing the, the recordings, no? And makikita ko naman dito kung sino yung mga nagpa-participate. Okay, so problem 5, solve for the two requirements, the break-even point in units, and the units required to earn the target market of target profit of 150,000. Your time starts now. Okay, let's solve problem 5. Okay. <clears throat> so what is the break-even point in units? That is your fixed cost divided by the CM per unit. The fixed cost here is 15,600. And the CM per unit here is 12 minus 4. This is 8. Okay. So this is 15, 6 divided by 8. And this is 1,950. The answer in item 1. First question. And it says here, what? how many units that need to be sold in order to earn a target market of 150,000? So this is your... Uh, unit number of units no? with target profit. Okay. So you have the number of units with target profit. So fixed cost natin ay 15,600 plus the target profit of 150,000. Divided by 8. 
So this is twenty thousand seven hundred pesos. Twenty thousand seven hundred units. Okay. Next. So let's move to problem six. In problem six, there is another concept here. This is your margin of safety. Margin of safety, that is the difference between your sales minus the break-even sales. This margin of safety is used no, to determine what is the corresponding allowance as far as your stock is concerned no, before your inventory runs out. So that margin of safety now will be an identifier for you to have the so-called reorder point. But that the order point that should be discussed in another quantitative techniques. So here, this is the difference between the actual sales minus the break-even sales. And this indicates the maximum amount by which sales would decline without incurring a loss. And that is what? Somewhat related to allowance. So in problem here, you are... Problem 5. This should be problem 5. Uh, refer to problem 4. You know, refer to problem 4, which is Nadal. So, ito si Nadal. If, this, if, if Nadal is selling 20,000 units per month at 32, what is the margin of safety? Again, the margin of safety, that is the difference between your sales minus the break-even sales. So the sales here is 20,000 times 32. And that is the level of your sales minus the break-even sales computed in item number four that will give you now the margin of safety. Okay? Well, the margin of safety ratio, that is your margin of safety divided by sales. But let's have first item, this item. Compute for the margin of safety. Okay? This compute now for the margin of safety, that is your sales minus the break-even sales. Okay, so let's have this item. <clears throat> so here, this is 20,000 times 32. That is 640,000. What is the break-even computed in item 4 class? Magkano na yung kanina? 
let's check no? Yan, four hundred thousand. Na in problem four. Okay, so the margin of safety would be six hundred forty thousand minus four hundred thousand. So the answer for that should be two hundred forty thousand. Okay, let's move to the next item. <clears throat> Okay, let's have problem six here. So there are five requirements under this problem six. You must determine your fixed cost, actual sales, profit, margin of safety, and the margin of safety ratio. So let's copy this in Excel. Sir, hindi po pala napapakita sa yung Excel niyo po. Alina po. Ah, ganun. Yes, pa, sir. Sige. Okay. So, this is your problem 6. Yung kanina, minanual ko lang. <clears throat> yung kanina, 32,000. Uh, thir uh, the level of sales given is 32,000. So in problem, the problem related to the computation of the margin of safety. So if you will resort to our handout, no? Sabi dyan, 20,000 times 32. Okay, so 20,000 times 32, that is your sales. That is 640,000. Tapos, the corresponding break-even sales related to item number 4. Nandito kanina. Ito, yung 400,000. So, 640,000 minus 400,000 will give you a margin of safety of 240,000. Okay? So, let's move here, problem 6. So, it says here, you must compute for these five items, fixed cost, actual sales, the profit, margin of safety, and the margin of safety ratio. Okay? So, let's compute. So, it says here that the break-even sales is 528,000. Well, the variable cost is 60%. The variable cost ratio is 60%. Well, the profit ratio is 8%. The variable cost ratio is just a complementary ratio related to your CM ratio. Therefore, the CM ratio here is 40%. Your sales is 100%, the variable cost ratio is 60%, and the CM ratio is 40%. So, to get the break-even point now, you have your, uh, to get the CM ratio now, that is 100% minus 60%. Okay? So, this is your sales. This is your variable cost. This is your CM. This is your fixed cost. And this is your profit. Okay, so this is 100%. Since the variable cost ratio is 60%, it is just a complementary ratio for your contribution margin ratio. So your CM ratio here is 40%. And it says here that the corresponding profit is equivalent to 8%. So if this is 8%, this is now 32%. Okay, so this is your break-even point and your break-even point is just your fixed break-even point in pesos. This is your fixed cost divided by the CM ratio. If this is your break-even sales, break-even sales amounting to 528,000, this was derived 
by using your fixed cost, which is an X amount, divided by your CM ratio of 40%. Therefore, your fixed cost here is 40% times this 528,000. And this is 211,200. So this is your fixed cost. Okay. So if your fixed cost is 32%, so to get the 100%, this should be 211,200 divided by 32%. So this is 660,000. So you can now compute this table by getting the corresponding percentage of this. And this is 660,000 times 60%. 60 so this is 660 minus 396. This is 264,000 minus 211,200. And this is your profit now amounting to 52,800. Okay, so let's compute for the requirements. Fixed cost is 211,200. This is your item one. Okay, your item two, this is your actual sales. 660,000. And the profit here is 8% or 52,800. While your margin of safety margin of safety that is equal to your sales minus the break-even sales. So your sales here is 660,000 minus the break-even sales amounting to 528,000. So your margin of safety here is 660,000 minus 528,000, and this is 132,000 pesos. This is the answer in item four. Okay, and your item five, that is just your margin of sales ratio. The margin of sales ratio, that is just your margin of safety divided by sales. So if this is your sales, 660,000, and this is the corresponding break-even sales of 528,000. This is your margin of safety. And that is 132,000. Divided by 660,000 to get the margin of safety ratio. So the margin of safety ratio here is 20%. Okay. So again, the sum of answers are fixed cost 211,500. Then your actual sales is 660,000. Then your profit is 52,800. Then your margin of safety is 132,000. And the margin of safety ratio equivalent to 20%. Okay, so let's resume with the lecture in MSC03. Okay, so we're now at the sales mix. Okay, so there are just one na lang class. So sales mix style. So under the sales mix, your step number one would be the computation of the, the weighted average CM per unit. So this sales mix class, this is the relevant combination of quantities of sales of various products that make up the total sales of a company. So to compute for the break-even point here, that is just your fixed cost divided by the weighted average CM per unit. While the break-even point in pesos, that is your fixed cost divided by the weighted average CM ratio. 
in problem 7, as you notice, there are two products, and that is your chairs and your tables. So, sabi dito, the sales mix is the relevant combination of quantities of sales of various products that make up a total up the total sales. So, in item 7, we are required to compute how many of units of chairs and tables should be sold next month to break even and how many units of chairs and tables should be sold to earn profit. Okay, so let's have this problem 7 here. Okay, let's copy in Excel. Okay. Okay. So the formula says, if you want to get the break-even, you must identify first the so-called weighted average CM. And the weighted average CM that can be computed by using the sales mix times the CM per unit. Here, there are two products. You have your chairs and tables. And the CM per unit of chairs that is equivalent to 150 CM per unit. So... 150 divided by 600. So this is 150 divided by the 600 units of chairs. And this is 0.25 cm per unit for chairs. <clears throat> While the cm per unit for the tables is the 75 divided by 150. So this is 0.5. Now, you will get the corresponding sales mix of this. The sales mix is the corresponding equivalent uh, contribution of the total. So the total here, sales in units, is six, 750. And 600 of that 750 belongs to, belong to chairs. So this should be 600 divided by 750. And that is 80%. That is the sales mix related to chairs. So if that is 80%, this is 20%. Or the computation of 150 divided by the total of 750. So that is 20%. So this is now what you call the weighted average contribution margin. So by multiplying the corresponding CM unit per unit times the corresponding sales mix. So if this is 0.25 times 80% sales mix, that is 0.2. And this is 0.5 times 20%. And that is 0.1. So this is a percentage. No? So the weighted average CM now, that is 0.2 plus 0.1. So this is your weighted average CM. And to compute now for the break-even point, you will have to use this fixed cost divided by the weighted average CM. So to compute now for the break-even point in units. So your fixed cost here is 90 divided by the weighted average contribution margin per unit. And this will give you the break-even point in units. But this 300 Units class refers to the combination of chairs and tables. While the requirement number one only asks us to provide how many units of chairs and tables should be sold. In total, that should be 300. 
But if we're asked, what is the specific number of tables and chairs that should be sold to break even? So you will now use the corresponding sales mix. The sales mix for chairs is 80%. And the sales mix for tables is 20%. Meaning, out of this 300, 80% of this belong to 240 chairs and 20% are four tables. Okay, to break even. So if we want to prove that, so this is your sales. At 240, the selling price of this is, or let's let's advance to CM, no? CM minus the fixed cost to get a profit. And that profit should be zero when we use 300 units. And out of that 300, 244 chairs and 64 tables. So the CM here is 240 times the CM per unit here of 25 for chairs. And this is 60 times 0.5. So this is 90. Okay. Total CM now is 90 minus the total fixed cost here of 90. And your profit is zero. So at break-even point, you must sell 240 units of chairs and 60 units of tables. Okay. So in item two, how many units of chairs and tables should be sold to earn 150 pesos? Just like in a single product that we have discussed earlier, what you need is to add this 150 target profit to the, its corresponding fixed cost to determine the number of units to be sold to earn a profit of 150. So to solve the next requirement, what you need is 290 plus 150. So this is your Units with target profit. So that should be fixed cost plus your target profit divided by the CM per unit. So fixed cost here is 90 plus 150 target profit. And the CM here or the weighted average CM per unit is 0.3. So this is 240 divided by 0.3. And this is 800. So 800 units must be sold. However, how many of that 800 will be sold for chairs? And how many for tables? And again, you will use the corresponding sales mix. The corresponding sales mix is 80% and 20%. So this 800 times 80% here will give you 640 units must be sold for chairs and 800 times 20%. This would be four tables. So again, if you want to prove that selling 640 chairs and 160 tables will give you an income of 150, so you can start at CM. CM minus fixed cost, you will have a profit, and the profit should be 150. 
So here, this is 644 chairs times cm per unit of 0.25. And we have here 160 times 0.5. And this is your total cm of 240 minus the fixed cost of 90. So this is 240 minus 90. And this is 150. Okay, so the answer for item two, how many units of chairs and tables must be sold to earn profit of 150? That should be a total of 800 units of chairs and tables on an aggregate. However, if you're asked to compute for the detailed amount of level uh, a number of units of chairs and tables to be sold to earn a profit of 150 you must use the corresponding sales mix okay so that is your problem seven let's move to problem eight <laughs> In problem 8, the same question as problem 7. However, here, there are three products. In item 8, you're asked to compute for the total umbrellas that the company need to produce and sell in order to break even. And how many of those number of units to be sold? should belong to medium-sized umbrella in order to break even. Okay? So your step number one is to compute for the weighted average contribution margin. And that should be your CM times the corresponding sales mix. And the sales mix for this, for the past several years, 20% of the company's sales have been the small and large umbrellas with the remaining 60% being the medium size. Okay, so 20% for large and small while the remaining is for the medium size. So that is the corresponding sales mix. 20% for small, 60% for medium, and 20% for large. And the company does not expect this change in the upcoming year. And these are the corresponding information. So your step number one is to compute for the CM times the sales mix to get the weighted average contribution margin. The total of those weighted average contribution margin Per size would be your weighted average contribution margin in total that will be used in getting the break even point. So your fixed cost here is 390,400 divided by the weighted average contribution margin per unit to get the number of units to be sold at break even. Okay. And once you have computed that, that is the answer for the requirement A. Well, to compute for the medium umbrellas that need to be sold in order to break even, out of that break even point, number of units, you just multiply that with the corresponding sales mix related to the medium size, and that is 60%. You will now get the answer for requirement B. Can you please, please try answering this problem in? Okay, then we'll move to the next two problems.
no? Okay, let's, let's assume, no? So this is the problem, no? The compute for the <clears throat> number of umbrellas to be solved in order to break even. And the corresponding umbrellas to be sold under a medium size in order to break even. So these are the corresponding contribution margin per unit for small, medium, and large. And the sales mix is 20%, 60%, and 20%. And the, that will give you a weighted average contribution margin of 1, 6, and 5.2. And that is equivalent to 12.2. So to compute for requirement A, that should be fixed cost of 390,400 divided by 12.2, and that is 32,000. And 32,000 times 60%, this is your 19,200 amount of <clears throat> medium size umbrella to be sold in order to break even. The next is your degree of operating leverage. The DOL measures how a percentage change in sales on the current level will affect the company's profits. It indicates how sensitive the company is to sales volume increases and decreases. It is also known the operating leverage factor. So to compute for the DOL, you must use the contribution margin divided by the profit before tax. And to compute for the change in profit before tax, that is just the change in sales times the degree of operating leverage. So here in problem number nine, it says here, if sales increase by 10%, how much percent would income increase? Assuming all other factors are constant. So we'll just use what? We will just use the degree of operating leverage to identify what is the change in the profit before tax. So using this problem number nine, Yeah, using this problem number nine, it says here that the company recently opened ABC Gym, and these are the corresponding information. There's an income of 30%, okay? But the owner is unhappy about the result of her shop's first year of operations. She observed that despite very high contribution margin, income was still low because of very high fixed costs. And she feels that an increase in sales would not yield a satisfactory increase in profit. So the concept that you will be using here is the degree of operating leverage. And in item number one, we are asked to compute for the operating leverage factor the operating leverage factor is the same as the degree of operating leverage. And to compute for that, you must use your, under the handout, you must use your CM over the profit before tax. Okay, so if we will be using problem number nine, your CM here is 150,000 over your income or profit that will give you five and that five is your DOL that degree of operating leverage is the factor to be used if you want to know what would be the change in income if there is a certain percentage of movement in sales just like in problem number nine wherein the sales increased by 10 percent so what would be the change in net income related to the change in sales so without resorting to this computation you just you can already identify the change in the corresponding income and the change in the corresponding income can be derived by using the degree of operating leverage times the change in sales so this is 50 percent okay so if you want to prove that this is the existing income of the company.
30,000. Okay? It says here, if 6 increased by 10%, so this should be 250 times 1.10, that is 275. 100,000 times 1.10, that is 110,000. And the corresponding CM here is 165,000 minus the level of fixed cost of 120,000. And that will give you 45,000. So that 45,000 now, if you get the increase, that is equivalent to 15,000 increase from the previous level. And that 15,000 represents what? That represents 50% increase in net income. Okay, so that is your degree of operating leverage. And the last item here is the indifference point. So the indifference point plus, this is the level wherein choosing any of the alternative uh, will give you no advantage over the other. Why? Because the, lev the level of that indifference point is the level of volume at which two alternatives being analyzed would yield income, would yield e equal amount of total cost or profits. So you have the formula here that is unit CM times the quantity minus fixed cost equals to unit CM times quantity minus fixed cost. Okay? and use algebra to come up with the corresponding level of quantity, which would be the indifference point. Or you can use another formula, and that is your fixed cost plus the unit variable cost times quantity. So here, let's have problem four. We'll use problem four, and we will get for the indifference point for that. So here, it says that the requirement is for us to compute the level of sales that the company would generate that would be indifferent between the two alternatives. And it says here that the first alternative is this. The company currently pays its salespeople salaries amounting to 400,000 pesos per month, but no commissions. The sales department is considering a plan wherein the salespeople would receive a part percent commission, but the salaries would fall to 250,000 per month. So there are two alternatives here. One, status quo, and that is the, the level of payment, no? for the salespeople at 400,000 per month. That is the first alternative. And the second alternative, that the salespeople would receive a 5% commission, but the level of their basic salaries would fall at 250,000. So <clears throat> using the formula, at, and what is the, what, what is the indifference point? No? Nadal sells, company sells its product at 32 per unit and the variable cost per unit is 24 and the fixed cost is 100,000 per month. So using this formula, the unit CM here is 8. So that is 32 minus 24, that is 8. Times the quantity represented by Q minus the fixed cost. And the fixed cost here is your 400,000 in alternative A. While in alternative B, that is 5%. 5%, that is what would be your CM per unit, and that is equivalent to 6.8. No? 6.8 Q minus the 250,000. So to have that, that is your 32 selling price. Instead of 24, there would be a 5% commission, and the 5% commission is equivalent to 1.6 or 1, yes, 1.2. Uh, 1 okay. And that is now 6.8 CM minus 250,000. 
So using this formula, the transposition, you will get what? A quantity equivalent to 125,000. So at 125,000 quantity, this is the indifference point. Where in the total cost would yield the same profits either choosing one of the alternatives. And that is your indifference point. Okay. Okay. So this is 32 selling price per unit and the variable cost per unit that would be 24 times an additional 5% commission that would generate 25.2. So that should be 24 times 1.2 times 1.05 I mean. So 24 times 1.05. To give you 25 point. Okay, so this is your indifference point at 125,000. At 125,000, the profit in alternative A will provide 600,000, while the profit for alternative B will also provide 600,000 pesos. And this is your module 3. So your first squeeze will be until module 3. So one, two, three. So there is one topic left, and that is the least square method that should be described to that should be discussed tomorrow along with module four. Module four is all about the absorption and variable costing, while module five that is relevant costing. There are six modules here, so we're halfway done. So by tomorrow, siguro na two thirds na tayo. Okay, so let's schedule your first quiz. Your first quiz tentative that is on a Friday. Friday in the afternoon. But if you want that in the morning, okay lang. Okay, so that is good for two, two hours. Pero tingin ko, tatlong oras yun. So I will give you three hours for that exam, or quiz number one, and that will cover modules 1, 2, and 3. Okay? So, if there are no questions, let's call it a day. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, sir. See you tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you.